horror movies, mutilation, decapitation, torture. Does that sound entertaining? More blood than a blood bag. Have they got your attention? Candy man. Candy man. Candy man. Candy man. Candy man. All right. Enough of this shit. Ugh. Alright, welcome back to another solo edition of Video Waste Productions Reviews Movies. I just left the theater, I saw Candyman, let's get into it. So, there's three main players in this movie, and that is Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, Tiana Paris, and Coleman Domingo. Now, Nathan Stewart Jarrett plays a pretty impactful role into this, but not one of the bigger roles. So, you know, he kind of sets things off, but then doesn't have a ton more to do with it. Uh, so, you know, so we got Yaya as Anthony McCoy, struggling artist who lives with his girlfriend, Brianna Cartwright, played by Tiana Paris. And uh, Troy Cartwright is played by Nathan Stewart Jarrett. Um and then there's another player in the movie, William Burke, and that's uh, Coleman Domingo's character. So keep up. Brianna, Anthony and Brianna have Troy over for, to meet his new boyfriend. And uh, after dinner, Troy just randomly tells a scary story, almost against everybody's will. And... It happens to be a story of a white woman that goes down to the ghetto in uh, the 70s, late 70s, I'm guessing. And she's doing a journalistic piece on the projects and, you know, she supposedly snaps and just starts killing people with a hook and uh, steals a baby and tries to run the baby into a giant bonfire that the community is having um, and the community stops her and saves the baby so that's the story that is told now anthony as an artist is looking for new inspiration to new work because his girlfriend is an art dealer art consultant that works at a gallery he has a show coming up and you know he's he needs new material so he kind of starts lightly diving into this story. Anthony goes down to the projects, which are abandoned now. It's like a ghost town. Um, he's down there. He's walking around, taking pictures. He gets stung by a bee. And then this guy, William Burke, uh, shows up and starts telling him the legend of Candyman. He goes further into a flashback scene that the movie starts with. Shows a little bit more detail and basically, there was a man named Sherman. Um, he had a hook for a hand, and he gave out candy to kids. Uh, this is all he did. He never hurt anybody. But razor blades started showing up in candy one time, and it was a little white girl that got hurt. And they immediately went to the projects and started a manhunt for him. So Sherman hides, naturally. Uh because he's done nothing wrong and they're basically gunning for him so he hides you see a little boy in the laundry room doing some laundry and he's leaving and sherman comes out of a hole in the wall that was there it's not supernatural or anything and offers the kid candy well the kid screams because he believes the bullshit that was told to him about sherman being this razor blade candy man and the cops are on their manhunt and they hear the scream and you see Sherman still extend the candy to him. The kid accepts the candy and the cops rush in and beat Sherman to death. No trial, no due process, no nothing. And we all know this happens way too much. So, you know, the guy, William, is telling this story about his own experience with Sherman and he him learning that Sherman wasn't the enemy it was actually the police uh and 
you know, sadly Sherman died. Um, <clears throat> so Anthony takes all this information and he does a few paintings here and there. Um, and just kind of, uh, continues to look further into the story, continues with more research, uh, hoping that there's more, uh, inspiration in the story. The whole time this is happening, um, his hand is starting to become, uh, decrepit. The longer this goes on, it starts spreading up his arm, it starts spreading on his chest, and slowly grows up his neck and side of face. Um, this was hard for me to watch. I have triphobia. I hate that shit so much. I'm getting chills just talking about it. They did amazing practical effects in this movie as far as his skin. It it really bothered me. I had chills the whole time. My muscles were tense. I was just like, Ugh. like I can stand a lot, but for some reason, holes in succession bother me. I don't, I don't know. Anyways, um, that's where I'm going to leave the story. Uh, you have to see the rest of the movie to get it. So let's move into it. Who is the show stealer of this movie? Obviously, it's Yaya, uh, Anthony McCoy's character. He has the widest range of emotion, the widest uh, character arc. So he, the award goes to him for that. Let's go to the effects. Um, there's, it's really hard because when you CGI an insect, it, it will never look good. We've seen this a million times in movies, but in order to get the insect to do what you want, you got to CGI it because you can't control animals or insects, especially. Uh, and if you can't control them, you can only control them for so long. So the CGI wasn't bad. It was just noticeable. Um, there's a few things in the movie that have CGI that I was just kind of like, wow, that's okay. I, I had to look past it a few times. Now, the practical effects that they did in this, I just spoke about my triphobia and maybe that's why, but the practical effects in this movie were great. Um, so I think that they nailed it on that one. Now, photography the choice of the cinematography. It was pretty good. It was pretty interesting. It was nothing that I haven't seen before, but at this point, what would you expect? You've seen pretty much everything at some point. So yeah, it's good. Some of the shots that they chose, uh, low angles looking up and a lot of the cityscape shots that they did, um, are, were really interesting. Uh, they were almost unnerving a little bit just because your brain doesn't want to process the way they shot them. Uh, and I'll leave that for when you see the movie. Um, so yeah, I think that the movie was shot really, really well. Uh, I think that the director did a great job. Um, whoever, you know, helped with those choices did a great job. Is there quotable lines in this movie? No. There's a quotable story to this movie. Um, and that's the social statement that it makes. And they lay it on thick. And it was hard for me to hear a lot of times. Because I'm the enemy in this movie. But it's true. So just, you know, had to swallow my pride and watch. Um, still enjoyed the movie. It didn't take me out of the movie. Um, but the overall statement of the movie, uh, you know, it, it's, it's hard to deal with. And especially with such powerful acting, you really feel it. And, you know, you realize how big of a shame it is. I mean, you already know it's a huge shame and it's shameful. Um, but you really, it, it really hits home when you see it. 
because the dramatics of it drive it home. Now, is there any standout moment? The whole movie is a standout moment. Um, but within the movie, no. The movie was toned down pretty well with the kills, which I thought was odd, um, but also interesting. Because as they remake these movies, they seem to try to ramp everything up. They didn't do that with this one. That was good. It stayed true to that. I also like the fact that they ignored Candyman 2 and 3. For the most part, basically, they ignored it. And they almost ignored part 1. But, whatever. Uh, I think that this movie did a really good job at... And Jordan Peele will get the credit for this from me because I've seen him do it time and time and time again. Um, the social undertones, the social statements, bringing it and putting it into your face and doing it in a, in a genre that has, you know, done it for a long time. Um, but he really drives it home. Uh, and he does it very, very well. And, you know, like I said, sometimes it's harsh to hear, but at the same time, it's true. So, you know, what are you going to do? Um, would I recommend this movie? Absolutely. This movie was fantastic. I liked it a lot. Um, as far as a star rating goes, I really have a hard time giving anything a, a five star rating. Except for Suspiria. The new Suspiria. So I'm going to give this, I don't know, the impactfulness of it to me, like the stories that are told, the way they're acted. Um, and I'm not talking about a man with a hook. I'm talking about overall. I'm going to go four and a half stars on this one. And it looks to me that they're going to expand the universe. I'm not going to tell you how, but they use Tony Todd exactly how I thought they would. And I called that shit months and months and months ago. You can see it in some other video that we have up. Um, but yeah, they used them exactly how I thought they would. And uh, I think they're going to expand the universe. So I'm really looking forward to more Candyman movies. Expect, expect more. I would. Anyways, thanks for watching. And go watch this movie. It's really good. Oh, and one thing that I wanted to mention is, I don't know, if you're familiar with our videos, you will know that in movies, I'm not a huge fan of animation in the middle of a live action movie. They use animation to tell the story in this movie. It's not, it's, it's done well. You can tell that it's not real puppetry, but they do, they CGI it or create it on a computer however digitally they do that very well in this movie and i didn't mind it at all and this might be one of the first times that i didn't mind it i even sat and watched the entire credits because they continued the puppetry through the ends of the credits so um that's saying something to me at least but anyways that's my review. I hope you like it. And uh, yeah, go check it out for sure.